Members of the uh, body, let me just, if I might, talk a bit about a distinguished, in my opinion, woman whose picture is here beside me. Her name was Henrietta Lacks. Uh, she was born 100 years ago in Roanoke, Virginia. Mrs. Lacks and her husband and her family later moved to Baltimore County in 1941, seeking, as a lot of people did, what they thought were jobs that were available the further north you moved. They moved in an area near what was known as the old Bethlehem Steel Plant. Uh, she and her family lived not far from me and my family in a segregated black enclave known as Turner Station. Ironically, um, Ms. Lax got ill. In 1951, as a young mother, she went to the hospital complaining of vaginal bleeding. And she went to Johns Hopkins at the time, which was one of the few hospitals that African Americans could go to and be treated at. Upon examination, gynecologists discovered a large malignant tumor in her cervix. During her treatment there, Two cell samples were taken from Ms. Lax and from her cervix without her permission and without her knowledge. One sample was healthy tissue. The other sample was cancerous tissue. And these samples were given to a physician and a cancer researcher at Hopkins to study. What he would soon discover was that Mrs. Lax's cells were unlike any others he had ever seen. Where other cells would die, Mrs. Lack's cells doubled every 20 to 24 hours. This continued after her death. The cells from the cancerous sample became known eventually as the Heli immortal cell line. The Heli immortal cell line is the oldest and the most commonly used human cell line in scientific research anywhere in the world. The cell line was found to be remarkably durable and prolific. It allows its use extensively in scientific study, and this was the first human cell line to prove to be successful in in vitro studies, which was a scientific achievement with profound implications on the future and profound benefits to medical research. HeLi cells can divide an unlimited number of times in a laboratory cell culture plate as long as fundamental cell survival conditions are met and sustained. There are, as we have come to know over time, many strains of HeLi cells as they continue to mutate in other cell cultures. But all HeLi cells are descended from the same tumor cells once removed from Mrs. Lax. The total number of HeLi cells that have been propagated in cell culture far exceeds the number of cells that were in her body. Today, these incredible cells are used to study the effects of toxins, drugs, hormones, and viruses on the growth of cancer cells without having to experiment on humans while that's being done. They have been used to test the effects of a number of different things, radiations, poisons, and to study the human genome and to learn more about how all viruses ultimately work. And they have played a crucial role in the development of the polio vaccine. When Jonas Salk was so close to getting what he thought was an effective vaccine, Dr. Salk tested the vaccine against the cells, and the cells directed him to make the vaccine even more potent. The NIH analyzed and evaluated scientific literature over the course of time involving HeLi cells and found that over 110,000 publications cited the use of those cells from 1953 to 2018. And so this analysis, I think, further highlights the persistent impact of HeLi cells in science and in medicine, proving 
that they have been a consistent and essential tool that has allowed researchers to expand their knowledge base in fields such as cancer biology, infectious disease, and many, many other areas. There's so much to be said about Ms. Lax, who died in that same black poor enclave many, many years ago. Uh, but to her credit and to the credit of all science, her living clearly was not in vain, and her death has proven something that nobody ever anticipated at the time, that there could even be such a cell that would continue to develop and mutate long beyond the donor's ability to live. I want to uh, reserve, if I might, the balance of my time. I don't know if the gentleman from Oregon at this time wants to be recognized, but, Mr. Speaker, I would reserve whatever time we have left on this side.